Hi and welcome back to my channel. This week's problem is a really interesting one, I think. It's one that I've adapted from another problem I found and it's all about finding the height of this rectangle. Now the key thing that we need to know is that the area A1 is equal to the area A1, i.e. the area of the green square is equal to the area of the green triangle and the area B1 is equal to B1, so the area of the yellow trapezium is equal to the area of the yellow triangle. Now the width of this rectangle we're told is 15. I would strongly recommend that you sit down if you can and have a go at this problem. It's, it's quite a nice one, it starts off quite easy, but at the end you've got to be a little bit careful. So just be aware of that if you're having a go at this yourself. And what I will do is I'm going to label the vertices because sometimes you get comments about that because we want to put down their solutions and it's quite difficult if you don't have uh, points to reference in your comments. So A, B, C, D, I'll call this E, I'll call this F, and I've missed one, so I'll call that G. Doesn't really matter what they're called, but just so there's consistency and anyone in the comments can refer to that if they want to. Now, I'm actually going to get rid of all of that because I'm not going to use any of them. I can just verbalise what I'm talking about. So the first thing to notice, uh, well, not notice, but like I've said, is that we've got A1 is equal to A1 and B1, the area, is equal to B1. Now, we're going to start off by looking at a1, the area of those shapes. So the shapes we have got there are a square. Now what I'm going to do, I forgot to get rid of the G, I'm going to call the length of this square X. Now that allows me to put X's here uh, and then I can make this length 15 minus X and this will also be X here. Uh, what I need to call, uh, well I need to label, sorry, I need to call the height something. So I'm going to call the height, just for clarity, I'm going to call that A. I don't want to call it Y because I might need Y for something else later on. Um, and it's the height of this A1 area. So we'll call it A. Now that makes this length here, uh, just above the height of the square, um, X, sorry, A minus X. So that height is A minus X. Now at this point, we can start working out some areas and then equating them. So we're starting off with the A1s. Well, I've got from the left-hand green square, I've got X squared, and that must be equal to a half, because it's a triangle, uh, times A times by um, 15 minus X. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to double both sides and I'm going to get 2x squared is equal to and then a 15 minus x which I'm going to expand in a second. What I will also do is I'm just going to change the colour of this a because otherwise we could get confused. So let's do that uh, and equally I'm going to do it with all of this. Okay, carrying on. We've got 2x squared, which is going to be a quadratic, equal to 15a minus ax. Let's get all of that onto one side. So we get 2x squared plus ax uh, minus 15a, because remember a is going to be a value, a number. Now I could start to try and solve this with the quadratic formula and get x in terms of a, uh, and that is a a valid route to go down, but it leads to more complications later on. So I'm not going to do that for the moment. But what I am going to do is I am going to put this to one side because that will be useful later on, that quadratic. And I am going to start now looking at the B1s. Right, so B1, the bottom right triangle, that is going to be a half of X times by 15 minus X. And then we've got the area of this top trapezium. Now the area of the trapezium is half the sum of the parallel sides. So the parallel sides are 15 and x, so that's going to be 15 plus x times by a minus x. Right, now what I can do straight away there is double both sides of that equation to get x. 15 minus x is equal to 15 plus x times by a minus x. The next thing I can do is then expand the brackets on this to so get 15x minus x squared is equal to 15a plus xa 
minus 15x and then minus x squared. It's got a little bit small there because I'm running out of space, but hopefully you've heard me say it, you can see it hopefully as well. Now, next I'm going to cancel out the minus x squareds on both sides and get 15x is equal to 15a plus xa minus 15x. Right, at this point, what I ideally want, because I want to, well, I want to get in this left-hand equation, this quadratic we found earlier, I want to get a quadratic in terms of A, or something I can solve in terms of A. So if I get, if I rearrange this equation we've just found on the right-hand side here, so that I've got X as the subject, I can then substitute in for X, and then I'll have an equation in terms of just A. So what I want to do next is add my 15X to get 30X, and what I will do, just while I'm thinking of it, is put a box around here to box that off, because that's going to be key later. So I've got 30x by adding 15x to both sides equals 15a plus xa. And we want it in terms of x, don't we? So we want um, all the x, uh, all the x, what am I, what's the word I'm thinking of? I've completely lost the word. I want... Um, all of the, the values, not the values, that's not the right word. I want all of the... I can't think of the right word. I'm going to take away XA from both sides anyway. I'll think of it in a second. My brain's just completely gone. Um, and then I'm going to factorise the X out. 30 minus A equals 15A. And then I'm going to scroll down very slightly. I'm going to divide both sides here by 30 minus A. Terms, that's the word I was thinking of, terms. I want I want every term with x in it on one side. Right, divide by 30 minus a, and we get this. Now that's going to be important, so I'm going to put a box around that. I'm going to put it with the other thing that we worked out earlier, and then we are going to tidy everything up here. Let me just move that over here, and then we're going to get rid of all of this. Okay, now we're going to basically substitute in, like we said, or like I said earlier, you might be saying it as well, 4x into this top equation we found earlier. Now what that is going to give us is um, two lots of 15a over 30 minus a um, in brackets squared. I'm going to have to keep this quite small because otherwise we'll run out of space. And then we've got a lots of 15 a over 30 minus a uh, minus 15 a is equal to zero okay what we're going to do is i am going to well I, i'm thinking at this point that these numerators i'm going to multiply by okay now what i'm going to do next like i say i'm going to square the numerators sorry the denominators i'm going to multiply by square the numerators i'm going to leave the denominators in brackets so I've got two lots of 15 squared is 225a squared over 30 minus a squared uh, plus, and then I've got 15a squared over 30 minus a, minus 15a is equal to zero. And then I'm going to bring the two into this, so I've got 450a squared over 30 minus a in brackets squared plus 15a squared, that is squared, over 30 minus a minus 15a is equal to zero. Now at this point, like I said I wanted to do, I'm going to multiply by that denominator, but I've got to multiply by uh, 30 minus a all squared. Now what that's going to get me is uh, 450a squared uh, denominators will cancel there if I multiply by 30 minus a squared and then I get plus 15 a squared now one of the 30 minus a's will cancel here from the 30 minus a squared so I'm just left with 130 minus a here and then minus 15 a times by 30 minus a squared equals zero now I'm going to tidy all this up again because I'm running out of space quite quickly here but we are getting somewhere very close to the answer at this point. And what I'm also going to do, actually, I can get rid of these now. I no longer need these equations because I've got one equation that I initially need to solve. So let's put that up here where we can see it. 
Right, I've just remembered you couldn't see those equations because they were behind my head. <laughs> Hopefully you remembered what they were, but they were there. Uh, now, here I'm going to start expanding brackets, so I get 450. A squared plus, now 15 times by 30 is 450 A squared off the top of my head. Definitely didn't use a calculator for that. Uh, minus 15 A cubed. And then we've got minus 15a, and then we've got to expand this bracket, 30 minus a squared. So 30 times 30 is 900. Minus 60a, and then we have got uh, plus a squared, because you've got negative a times negative a. Now, what I can now do is I can factorise a out of all of this straight away. Uh, or essentially divide by a, because if I'm factorising out the a and it's equal to zero, then one of my solutions will be a equals zero, which we know is not going to work anyway, because we've got to have some height to this rectangle. So I can divide everything by a uh, immediately, that'll make things easier. So 450a plus 450a minus 15a squared, okay, so that's going to help get us the quadratic, minus 15 and then 900 minus 60, a uh, plus a squared is equal to zero. We can start simplifying some of this. Uh, so what I'm going to get is 900a, I'll scroll it down very slightly, 900a minus the 15a squared, and then minus, now I'm going to have a factor of 15 in everything here, but I'm going to simplify everything first and then I'll divide it all by the 15. So 15 times 900, we get 13,500. Well, that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Thank goodness we can divide that by 15. Now, negative times a negative is a positive, but we've got 15 times 60, which is 900. So plus another 900a and then minus your 15 a squared equals zero. Tidying all of that up, what we get is minus 30 a squared, and then we get uh, plus 1800 a uh, minus 13,500 equals zero. I'm going to times everything by negative one just to get everything positive, or essentially move everything from the left hand side of my equals to my right. Same thing is going to give me 30 a squared minus 1800 a minus or plus sorry 13,500 equals zero now I said we could divide everything by 15 turns out we can actually divide everything by 30 here and and that's something that I want to check because I've got 30 in front of my a squared so that gives me if I divide everything by 30 at this point a squared is a squared minus 1800 divided by 30 is 60 minus 60 a and then plus 13,500 divided by 30 is 450, and that is equal to zero. Now, at this point, we've ruled out one solution, and that was A equals zero. It's not possible. This will give us two other solutions using the quadratic formula, and that will give us that A is equal to 30 plus or minus uh, 15 root 2. Now, you will just want to double check that uh, if you've done this yourself. Obviously, use your quadratic formula. Um, Essentially, what you need to check when I say double check this is do both of those solutions work and do they work in both of our equations? So the earlier equation uh, we had, does it work in that? Um, that's when we had x equals uh, and does it work with the quadratic? Well, it should work with the quadratic because we've just done it here. Uh, we've we basically solved the quadratic by substituting in. But does uh, both of these work in the earlier um, equation that we substituted in. Now, as it turns out, only one of them does, and that is uh, 30 minus 15 root 2. The only solution which works is 30 minus 15 root 2. So that is the answer. That will work in both equations, and what you can do to check as well is you can try it for the areas and make sure those areas are the same and that is your answer to A. So that will make sure that you get the same values of X for your areas for A and for the areas of B. I hope you enjoyed that problem. Like I say, it's quite a neat one, quite a nice one, I thought anyway, and hopefully if you did try it at home you were able to get the same solution as me. 
Thank you for watching, and like I said, if you enjoyed it, drop a like on the video and, and consider subscribing to the channel because I uh, put out a new problem solving video every single week. Thank you for watching, like I say, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, bye bye.